Well, what do you, uh, I mean, you know, John Bolton, did you have a chance to hear what he had to Hello, everyone. Who's with us? Adrian's here. Hello, Adrian. How are you? Baruch Hashim, I saw you off an hour ago. Nothing's changed. <laughs> That's good. As long as nothing changed. I'm happy to hear that nothing changed. <laughs> That's more important that nothing changed, you know. Hello, Marky. How's that? Hello, Rob. How, How are, are you? you? Baruch Hashim. Special reader. Yep. Mr. Mark Schenker. How are you? Who else with us? Who's else with us? I see someone else. I'm not sure who else with us. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry? I'm Hello? just looking to see. I don't know. It said w MW something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who is that. Anyway, let's just wait another few seconds for more people to join us and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. In the meantime, um, what's the time? What's the time? Whoa, the time it's is fun. actually the time is actually over eight o'clock. It's eight, at two minutes past eight, and we should actually start the show. Over matter of fact, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to mute everyone. Uh, Marky, you're going to unmute yourself. I mean, you know how to do that. Yeah. We'll go from there, and we'll start <clears> the show. <throat> and people will join us. I'm sure. I'm going to start the show in one second. Okay, where we are. I mute all. I'm muting everyone. Everyone is muted. Yes. And now I'm going to start the show. Bezrat Hashem. Okay, so Rabotai, I'm going to start the show. Rashur Liel, Yele, Eloi Nishmat, Arab, Abraham, Haim. Ben Yaakov Eliezer, that means Rabbi Tenza, the late Rabbi Tenza, Harav Leilu Nishmat, Leilu Nishmat Mordechai Ben Rahma, Mordechai Ben Rahma, that means Moti, Moti. We're going to delete the show for him. Asheru Ele, Yele, Eilu Nishmat, Esther Bat Moshe Alevi. ולרפואת מנשה נג'י בן פרחה, אורה בת מרים, הרב אברהם בן מרינה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, ולרפואת ליאורה בת מרים, תלי אסתר בת ליאורה, בת אל בת ליאורה, ולרפואת גולדה איטול בת שולמית לאה, ולרפואת חיה חפצי בת שרה אימנו. Dvora Batister, anyone else? Mark, unmute yourself. Aviva Batia, Bat Shaina Kayla. Aviva Batia, Bat Bat Aviva Batia, Bat Shaina Kayla. Aviva Batia, Bat Shaina Kayla. בכל שאר חולה ופצועי עם ישראל, בכל מקום שהם. אל נא ופנה לה. אל נא ופנה לה. אוקיי, בעזרת... אוקיי, בעזרת... אוקיי, בעזרת... אוקיי, בעזרת... אוקיי, בעזרת... אוקיי, גרשון בן סוניה. גרשון בן סוניה. ומשה מאיר בן חנה. משה מאיר בן חנה. אוקיי. שהקדוש ברוך הוא ישלח להם רפואה. ברמה חבריהם ושיישא גדיהם אמן, כן יהי רצון. אוקיי, אז נתחיל את השיעור בעזרת השם. רבותיי, אני אעשה את השיעור הראשון לשיעור. אז בשנת 2331 שנים לקריאציה, לוי, שהיה השלטון הראשון של הטריבה, נמצא בגיל 137, והוא בעצם היה... Uh, from all the tribes, he lived the longest. In the same year, in 2,233, 300, 2,331 for the creation, start the physical slavery for the Jewish people. That's me. The physical slavery started 
on the Jewish people in the same year. Where do we learn that? We learn that from what it says in the Pasuk, Vayavidu Mitzrayim et Bnei Israel Baparech Vavoda Kasha Behomer Ulvini. That means now, <coughs> now actually the Bnei Israel starting actually the physical slavery. In the year 2336 for the creation, Miriam and Nevia, Miriam the prophet, born in Egypt to her father Amram and to her mother Yochevet. And why did they call her Miriam? Hazal explained, Mishum Shemiriru Hamitzrim et Hayem. That means they call her Miriam because the Egyptian make the life of the Jewish people so better. Okay, and Hazal say on this year, okay, the Egyptian actually make the physical slavery even harder now. In the year 2365 for the creation, Aharon Akohen born. Aharon Akohen born in Egypt also. And he been called Aharon. Why did they call him Aharon? Hazal explained, Mishum she'asru al b'nei Israel ta'irayon. What does it mean? That the Egyptian forced the Jewish people to prevent from fall, the, the Jewish woman from falling pregnant. What does it mean? That they put a decree on, on every Jewish boy that kol ben ha'yilod ha'yor ha'tashlichu. That means every firstborn, every baby born that born. And if it's a boy, you must throw him to the now. So by that, that they try to prevent the Jewish people, for, the Jewish woman from falling pregnant. And that's why he called Aaron, Shemanu et ha'irayon, Hazal say. And you know who was behind it? Bil'am Rasha. Bil'am Rasha, he put that decree that they try to prevent the Jewish people from falling pregnant. And that's what caused, that what caused to call Aaron Aaron, Shemanu Mimim Etai Rayon. That's why they call him Aaron. Okay? In the year 2368 for the creation, Moshe Rabenu born. Moshe Rabenu also born in Egypt. And a matter of fact, Moshe Rabenu born after his father Amram remarried his mother Yochevet again. Why? Because Amram was the head of the tribe, one of the head of one of the children of Levi. And when he saw that the Egyptian actually killing so many baby boys, he decided I'm gonna divorce. So what is he done? He, he divorced Yochevet. Came Miriam and Neviah, the sister of Moshe Rabbeinu. And she said to her father, you know, your decree, it's actually worse than Pharaoh. You know why? Because Pharaoh made a decree to kill boys. You killing boys and girls. Immediately he listened to his daughter Hazal say, and he took his wife back. He remarried her. And who born? Moshe Rabbeinu. When Moshe Rabbeinu born, the entire house got become full of light. Number one was full of light. Not only that, Moshe Rabbeinu born circumcised. Okay, in the year 2386 for the creation, Moshe Rabbeinu, <clears throat> in the age of 18, going out after growing up in a house of Pharaoh, he's gone out to see the suffering of his brothers in Egypt. And he see a man, Egyptian man, hitting a Jewish person. And Hazal explained he was Egyptian Man, one of the officers that was used to hit Datan. Okay, Datan was the husband of Shlomit Badovri. And Moshe and Moshe Rabenu, when he saw that Egyptian man hitting, he saw in the Holy Spirit that from that man, from all of his generation, no good people will come from him. He said the holy name and he killed them. When that happened. And this thing been revealed and been found out by Pharaoh and many people. Some of Hazal say that it was Datan and Aviram, the person that he saved, saved and his brother gone to 
tutel tell on Moshe Rabbeinu. Listen to that. So Moshe Rabbeinu have to fled. Moshe Rabbeinu first fled to city of the land of Kush. Okay. <coughs> Later on, <coughs> sorry. Later on, he became a king of Kush, and he was there, a king for 40 years in Kush. After that, he left Kush, and he gone to Midian. In the year 2445 for the creation, when Moshe Rabbeinu, after he was in, in uh, Midian, he decided to take Tzipora, the daughter of Fitro, after he converted her. Okay, he took her as a wife, and we know that he married her. In the year 2447 for the creation, Moshe Rabbeinu was a shepherd to Yitro. And that year, Akadosh Baruch Hu revealed himself to Moshe Rabbeinu through the burning bush, the tawny bush, whatever you want to call it. And he asked Moshe Rabbeinu to go to redeem the Jewish people. At the beginning, Moshe Rabbeinu refused, but after that, after seven days, Moshe Rabbeinu accepted that job and he gone to the land of Mitzrayim and he gone to, to Aaron, him and Aaron gone together to Pharaoh and to ask Pharaoh to release the Jewish people to go and worship to go and worship their God in the wilderness. That's basically the introduction to our Torah, to our Parsha. Let's speak about now, it was a long introduction, I know, but there's a lot of thing happening in Parashat Shemot. The Parsha starts like this. Ve'ele shemot b'nei Yisrael ha'ba'im mitzrayma et Yaakov ish u'beito ba'u. These are the names of the children of Israel who were coming to Egypt with Yaakov. Each man and his household came. If we look the Humash of Humash Mot start with the connection letters. It's called Vavahibur. What it mean, Vavahibur? Vavahibur, it means the connection letters. Ve'ele. And many of the Mepharshim say, why did it say, it have to say ve'ele? It can say ele shemot b'nei Israel without the connection letters of vav. <coughs> why do I have to put the letters vav in the beginning? So I'm going to bring two different ideas. The first idea I'm going to bring that I wrote in a book that called Imre Noam. The book Imre Noam been written by a Rav Yoram Abarjel. Rabbi Yorama Barjel, born only 63 years ago, and he died four years ago, five years ago, if I'm not mistaken. He born in Moshav Shoresh, Moshav, uh, Moshav Brosh. Moshav Brosh is in the south of Israel. Okay, and in his book, he explained that the main reason that the connection or the conjunction letters of Vav, that it says, Ve'ele Shemot B'nei Israel. And in the book of Shemot, and that's what it starts, it's come to connect that the holiness that our forefathers that we talk in on Sefer Bereshit, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, okay, those holy people, they, they were such a holy people that the holiness that they have, they actually pass it on to who? to the children of Israel, to Bnei Israel, to the 12 tribes. And that's what it said, Ve'ele Bnei Israel Abayim Mitzrayim. And those, the children that came with Yaakov Avinu down to Egypt. That means it's come to tell you in the merit of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, the grandchildren become so holy. So what does it mean, Ve'ele? It's come to connect Sefer Bereshit, the holiness of the fathers from Sefer Bereshit, to the children in Sefer Shemot. In, <clears throat> I saw that in Midrash Vayikra, in the book of Midrash Vayikra, in, uh, in chapter 32, Hazal explained that it said, Ve'ele Shemot, Bnei Yisrael Abayim Mitzmaima, here the Torah tell us that what it means, Ve'ele, the Torah come to praise the holiness 
of the 12 tribes of Bene Israel. Those people that live during the generation of Yaakov, you know, not only the 12 tribes, they, their children and the grandchildren. Why is it? So he said that here you're learning in the merit, and Hazal is saying it, that in a merit of 14 that we're going to mention now, that what help Ben Israel to be redeemed from Egypt. The first one, Sheloshinushmam. What it means, Sheloshinushmam, that they didn't change the name. Number two, Sheloshinu Leshonam, that they didn't change the language. Velo Amru Leshonara, they didn't speak Leshonara. And number four, Velo Nimtza Baemehad, Parutz Baerva. That means that they didn't find one person that committed immorality. Unheard of. In Eretz Mitzrayim is unheard of. So now we can understand why is the book of Shemot start with the letters Ve'ele and those. You'd say Ele Shemot be Israel. Those are the children of Israel that came to Egypt. No, the Torah doesn't start like this. The Humash doesn't start like this. The Humash start and those. That mean to tell you their father was holy, they was holy. And that's why it start with the letters Ba. Okay. Then it says, that came down to Egypt. And immediately, many of the Mepharshim, and the head of them is Ari HaKadosh, Rabbi Tzhak Luri Ashkenazi. Rabbi Tzhak Luri Ashkenazi, born in Jerusalem 486 years ago. And he said, why does it say, why it say Mitzrayimah? There is here in the word Mitzrayimah, said the Ari Kadosh, and we're going to bring now. I'm going to do with you Gematria, I'm going to do with you the sword, the remes, you know, part of the Pardes. Look how, look how he explained it. So the Ari Kadosh said, if you take the word Mitzrayimah, what is the Gematria? I'll help you. It's 385. He said, the Gematria of the word Shechina, okay? It's all, also 365. It's, so what's the connection? He said like this. He said that here the Torah hinting to us and telling us that the Holy Spirit, the Shechina Kdosha, the Holy Spirit, when Bene Israel gone down to Egypt, who gone with them down to Egypt? The Holy Spirit. That's why it's a Mitzrayimah. He says something else, Ariya Kadosh. He said if you take the word and now he's telling us what's going to happen in the future from the word Mitzrayim and how he said that. He said, we say that the gematria of, of, of Mitzrayim is 385. He said, take the word Shmama. Shmama, it's desolate, wasteland. What it means, wasteland? He said like this. If you take the gematria of Mitzrayim and Shmama, it's the same gematria. He said that here, it's hinting to us that after Bene Israel gonna been redeemed and leave Egypt, Egypt gonna be a desolated land. That's mean wasteland. Nothing gonna grow up there. It's gonna be desolated. Not only that, he said, take the word Shmama, turn the letters. What are you gonna get from it? Mi Moshe. That's mean Moshe Rabenu will be the one to cause Egypt to be a desolated land, wasteland, nothing gonna grow up there. Until today, we look at Egypt. What's growing up there? Nothing. Egypt have nothing. So here the Torah already hinting to us from one word, Mitzrayim Asi Kadosh. Now we understand how we have to learn every word. What it mean Mitzrayim? What it say Mitzrayim and not Mitzrayim? It should say coming to Egypt. No, it doesn't say. It say coming Mitzrayim. And that's the secret behind that word. Let's continue in the same verse. It says, Ishu Beitobau, man, and the member of his house, okay? I saw a commentary of the Hatam Sofer. The Hatam Sofer was Rabbi Moshe Sofer. He born in a city of Frankfurt in Germany 257 years ago. And in his book, Torah Moshe, because his name was Moshe, he explained when Bnei Israel 
came down to Egypt, you know what they brought with them? They brought with them the Beit Midrash that they have in Eretz Israel. What is it to me? It says, Yehuda, and where Yehuda gone to Eretz Goshen? Why do Yehuda go to Eretz Goshen? We explained in the previous Shemurim that Yehuda gone to open Batei Midrashot. He said, you know what's the secret here? He said, the secret here when Bnei Israel came down to Eretz Mitzrayim, when I say Bnei Israel, that means Yaakov Avinu and in all of his house, except Yosef HaTzadik that was already there, and his wife, Osnat, and the two sons, uh, Menashe and Ephraim, he said like this, he said that the first thing that you that done in Eretz Goshen opened the Batei Midrash. So it said from that, that it said in a Pasuk, Ishu Beito Bau, that the first thing that they came, each member came with his own Bet Midrash and opened it in Eret Mitzrayim. That's on chat of the Dvarim. I saw another idea that actually a matter of fact, what it mean Ishu Beito? You remember we say that in Midrash Rabbah, in Sefer Vaikra, in chapter 32, in the merit of 14, Bnei Israel been redeemed from Egypt. One of them, we said that none of the Jewish people that while they was in exile, sin with immorality. Look how the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat come to prove that. Hazal tell us that a matter of fact, the word Beito, Beito, it means his house, referring to his wife. Where do we learn that? Hazal tell us in a Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, in page 118, folio one, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi used to call his wife my house. That means Hazal explained that from here you learn that every member of Bnei Israel always stay with his wife. That means none of them committed immorality while they was in Egypt. Why is it so important that the Torah tell us that? Because Eretz Mitzrayim, the land of Mitzrayim, has said, ervat aret. What it mean, ervat aret? The immorality that was in Egypt is beyond understanding. Not only that, Hazal tell us something very interesting. Hazal tell us in Gemara, asara kabim shel znut yardu la'olam. That mean 10 measure of immorality came down to the world. Tisha matla Africa. That mean, the continent of Africa took nine of that volume, nine of that measure of immorality, and the rest, the rest of the world. So Hazal explained that Mitzrayim was ervat aretz. Mitzrayim was so much, was so much immorality there. And we saw it with Potiphar's wife, what she was willing to do just to be with Yosef HaTzadik. The Torah come and tell us, Ishu Beito Ba, what does it mean Ishu Beito? Mm. That's every man that came with his wife, that is Beito, that the wife, as we prove it from the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, 118, folio one, it said that no one committed immorality. And that's what it means, this Pasuk. Mitzrayma, we say all the thought that there is behind it, that it's 385, that's referring to Shmama Desalen, that it's going to be from Moshe. Also, Shmama, if you turn the letters around, it will come in Moshe. That means from one word, you can learn everything. What it means, that the Torah here, we done the Pardes, Pshat Remes Dras Sod. That all the children, number one, was from the latest verb we learned that there was all tzaddikim like their father. Mitzrayma, that we explained earlier, what it means, Mitzrayma, why does it say Mitzrayma? It's come to tell us that the word Mitzrayma, number one, come to tell us that Shrina gone with them. But also Moshe turned the land of Eretz Mitzrayim to a desolate land, a wasteland. And then Ishu Beito, here we're learning that no man of Bnei Israel committed adultery. 
because the, the parsha is very, very long, I will skip now with your permission, Mark to verse 21. We jump in to verse 21 because it's going to take a long time and the parsha today is a bit long. So I decide to skip to verse 21. And in verse 21, we see something very interesting. Let's see first what it says. <laughs> And it was because the midwives feared Hashem that he made them houses. Okay. What does it mean because the midwife had the fear of heaven? He made them houses. What does it mean houses? So we're going to bring two different ideas. We're going to bring the pshat of the dvarim, and then we're going to bring a bit more depths and we bring the Gemara in Masechet Sota. But first, let's start with the Pshat. What's the idea behind Batim? That he made because they have a fear of heaven. And I'll explain now. Akadosh Baruch Hu made them house. So first of all, let me introduce the Pasuk. Paro took two midwives. Who they was? Shifra and Pua. Who was Shifra and Pua? If you look at Rashi and more and all the Mepharshim, they all explain that Shifra and Pua was Yochevet and Miriam. Yochevet was the mother and Miriam was a daughter. So why they call it, why then they call them Shifra and Pua? Shifra, Milshon Meshaperet, that she was improving the child. When the baby was born, she was given him warmth. And Pua, Pua is Miriam. Miriam used to talk to the baby and he used to give him love. So that's why they call Shifra and Pua. And Paro Rasha told them that when you're going to deliver the Jewish kids, you must kill the Jewish, every boy that you see, you must kill them, throw him to the north. At the beginning, it was also the Egyptian kids, any boy. Until Bilam come and told them it's going to be a Jewish. And then the decree was only on a Jewish boy. But at the beginning, it was also on an on a, on a, on a, on a Egyptian boy. So say the Malbin. The Malbin say something extraordinary. Who was the Malbin? The Malbin was Rabbi Meir Leibush Ben Yehiel Michal Weiser. He born in Ukraine around 212 years ago. And he explained in his commentary on the Torah, he explained like this. Paro Rasham, when he saw that Yochevet and Miriam, that Shifra and Pua, have the fear of heaven, he realized that if he gonna allow them to go to, as a midwife, to the house of the woman that need to, delete, uh, to give a birth, they're not gonna fulfill his command. They're not gonna listen to him. They're gonna obey his command. What he decided to do, listen what he done, say the Malbin. The Malbin say that Paro built maternity clinic. Paro himself built a maternity clinic. Can you believe it? What happened there? He forced every pregnant woman, when they saw that they're pregnant, when they saw that you already realized that the woman is pregnant, she have to go to the maternity club. And there he have his own men that they will watch and see over what's happening with Shifra and Pua. That means if Shifra and Pua doing, doing what he command. We know that Shifra and Pua didn't listen to him. But what it means, Batim, that he built maternity clinic. That's in Pshat of the Dvarim. That's the Hidush of the Malbin. Rashi HaKadosh says something completely different. Vayas Lahem Batim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made them houses. You know what houses he's talking about? Rashi HaKadosh say, Bate Keuna, Velviya, Vemalchut. That's, by the way, we're going to explain what it means. Bate Keuna, the house of priestly, the house of Levite, and the house of kingdom, the house of king. 
I saw that the commentary that the Midrash bring and that the Gemara in Masechet Sotah in page 11, folio, 11, folio 2. There Hazal explained that Yochevet and Miriam have the fear of heaven. And they didn't obey the law of Paro. They didn't kill the kids. That's me. He told them to kill the baby boys. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't listen to him. Akadosh Baruch Hu in merit of that, what it mean? What it mean? Vayashlaim Batim. He made them so important. What it mean? He made them so important. Say Hazal in the Gemara. Remember Masechet Sota eleven folio two and the Midrash. There they said that he made the kid very important. What it's very important. Number one, he made Yochevet given a birth to who? To Aharon and Moshe. Aharon become Kohen Gadol, Bate Kiuna. Moshe Rabbeinu, Bate Leviya, the Levite. And the question is, so who is Malchut? Kingdom. That's from Miriam. Who came from Miriam? Betzalel, you remember Betzalel, Betzalel, in the shadow of Hashem. He was the engineer, he was the master and in charge about all the vessel, about the table nickel. He was in charge about building the table nickel. That means he built the Malchut. So say from here, Vayaslam Batim, you can learn that if you listen to Akadosh Baruch Hu, no harm can happen to you. He say here, Pharaoh put a decree on Shifra and Puad that that's Yochevet and Miriam to kill who? Any baby boy. They didn't obey to that law. They resist to it. They didn't agree to it. They didn't done it. What did they merit to get? Nothing happened to them, number one. The most important, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu given Yochevet two great sons. Moshe and Aaron, Kohen Gadol. Where the, who doesn't want Kohen Gadol? Moshe Rabbeinu that spoke mouth to mouth to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. 40 days up in heaven, beyond understanding. And then Yocheve and then Miriam, Betzalel, the engineer behind the tabernacle, building the tabernacle. What is more than that? And that's what the Torah tells us. What it means, Vayas Laim Batim, we brought two opinions. On a pshat of the Dvarim, according to the Malbin, Parov built maternity clinic. Why? So he can watch Yochevet and Miriam. Are they going to obey his law or not? Number two, Vayas Laim Batim. The merit, as Rashi bring from the Midrash and the Gemara in Masechet Sota in page 11, Folio two, that there Hazal say that you know what married them to get such a great kid, the mitzvah that they didn't obey and they didn't kill the boys. From here we learn what it means by Yaslaim Batim. Let's move to chapter two and verse one. And look what it says here. ish mi bet levi, vayikah et bat levi. And a man two, went, verse one. A man went from the house of Levi and he took a daughter of Levi. Okay. What's happening here? What's happening here? Here the Torah tells us that a man, okay, Vayelech Ish, Mise Ish, wherever it's a Ish, we have to understand when it's referring to a word Ish in a Torah, it means a tzaddik. Who was that Ish? That's Amram, Amram. Amram, Rabotai, was a great man. Hazal explained. From the house of Levi, that's Amram. Who's Bat Levi? Yochevet. What's happening here? Here the Torah tell us, number one, that we explained at the beginning of the introduction for the parsha that Amram divorced his wife after he had Aaron. And then Miriam came to him and said, why are you divorcing your wife? Now all the tribe of Levi watch you because you're the head of the tribe of Levi now. 
because you are Amram, you're the son of Levi. Everyone watch you and they divorce their wife. That means the decree that you made on a tribe of Levi, it's worse than Pharaoh. You say why? Because we explain that Miriam said to him, by that that you divorce your wife, you cause other people to the other people from the tribe of Levi to get divorced. And when they get divorced, now not only that they don't have boys, they don't have even girls. So your decree is even worse than Pharaoh. Immediately he listened to her and he remarried Yochevet. And what did they have? A child. What is a child? Moshe Rabbeinu came. So in this verse, the Torah come and describe to us the birth of Moshe Rabbeinu. That means that Moshe Rabbeinu born the same like other human being, any other human being. But we have to understand, said the Hatam Sofer, you know why the Torah telling us all of this? What's so special about it that the Torah described that Moshe Rabbeinu born to Amram and to Yochevet? What's so special about it? In the time of the Hatam Sofer, the Jewish people suffered a lot from the Christian. Said the Hatam Sofer, the Christian believed that Yoske Mahshemov is born from the Holy Spirit. Said the Hatam Sofer, here our Torah come to tell you that Moshe Rabbeinu was a normal human being. Obviously not as, as, as simple like us, but he was a special man, but he was he born to a man and a woman. That means the Torah doesn't hide, doesn't have any agendas that you don't know. The Torah tell you the straight. Our Torah is a true Torah, doesn't hide nothing. Doesn't tell you Holy Spirit and who and what. No, no stories. Moshe Rabbeinu, born to a man and a woman. There's no makeup stories. That's, he say, why the Torah specifically tell us that means it was a man and a woman. That's according to the Remez and the Drashot. But Hazal, Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Sota in page 12, folio 1. Listen what they ask. They say, you know when Moshe Rabbeinu born? Moshe Rabbeinu born to his mother Yocheven when she was 130. Did you listen to that? 130. Hazal and Gemara say, well, we don't understand. That great miracle that happened to, to Yochevet doesn't mention here that she given a birth in the age of 130. Why? That's the question. But when Sarai Menu, that was in the age of 90, and she given a birth to its Hakavinu, oh, the Torah tell us about it. And then and Sarah was breastfeeding not only one boy, many, many babies. The Torah make from it a big thing. Immediately the Gemara in Masechet Sota Hazal asked, why the Torah doesn't tell us about that great miracle that happened to Yochavet in the age of 130? So I saw a beautiful commentary, a beautiful answer of Baal Tosfot Yom Tov. Baal Tosfot Yom Tov was Rabbi Yom Tov Lipman Heller. He born, and uh, uh, he born in a, in a Germany in a city in a, in a Bavaria in a Bavaria city. That means in a city that called Bavaria in Germany. He born around 442 years ago. And Rabbi Yom Tov Heller, that called Baal, Baal Tosfot Yom Tov, explain extraordinary. Listen what he said. He said, you know why the Torah didn't make a big fuss of Yochevet in the age of 130? Because giving birth in Egypt wasn't such a great thing. And I'll explain to you why. Because in Egypt, Akadosh Baruch who given the blessing of Puruvu. What it means, the Puruvu? That you should multiply. It wasn't a great miracle because women used to give a birth to six in one shot. Today, if you see a twin or triplet, oh, people go ballistic. In Egypt, six women was delivering six kids in one birth. So the, 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 the concept 
of giving birth wasn't such a great miracle there. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought his blessing in Eretz Mitzrayim. What did it say? Vayifru, vayirbu. That means that they multiply in Eretz Mitzrayim. So it was not such a great thing. When Avraham Avinu and Sarah Imen was a great thing. Why? Because Avraham and Sarah was barren. They couldn't have kids. Not only that, when suddenly they have a kid in the age of 90, Avraham Avinu done a mishte. What it means, done a mishte? So to say thanksgiving to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Why? Because when Yitzhak Avinu reached to the age of 24 months, they done it. Why Dafka then? Hazal explained that in 24 months, usually the baby stopped breastfeeding from his mom. So here, Avraham Avinu great, make a big saudat, saudat odaya to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Avraham Avinu was very famous all over the world. The king, princess came, queen, all different people came, lords and all different, mayors, whatever you want to call it, came to that party. But was those people that was suspicious. Some of them were suspicious. They was thinking, how come that Abraham in the age of 100, Sarah in the age of 90, suddenly only now you have kids. So what they done? They have a suspicious. Maybe it's Hakavinu been bought in the market, Hazal explained. Hazal and Gemara explained that they have a doubt. Maybe, maybe that boy, it's Hakavinu, they adopted it, they bought him in the market. So what they done, they wanted to check if they really, it's Hakavinu is the child of Sarai Menu. Those that have little kids brought, brought the little kids with them. Why? Because they wanted to see if Sarah can breastfeed their kids. What happened? Akadosh Baruch Hu made the miracle that Sarah Imenu have enough milk, not only for its Hakavinu, to breastfeed all of those queen and princess that came to that party with the child, with the little babies. Say from here, Hazal learned that the miracle of Abraham Avinu why is the Torah make a big thing about it? Because in their time, it was a great thing. The boys bought barren. There's no chance that they'll have kids. It's not like Yochevet and Amra, that in that generation, everyone was multiplying. And that's what Hazal tell us here. Number one, that Moshe Rabbeinu born to normal human being, normal parents, father and mother, not to make stories. Number two, the story of Yochevet didn't be mentioned that she was 130, you know why? Because in Egypt was a blessing of Puv. So it's not a chokhmah to mention that miracle and 130 to mention that she given a birth to Moshe Rabbein. Okay, now we understand that. Let's move by Ezrat Hashem to verse 10. In verse 10, here, it says something very interesting. And if you look what, after we read that verse and we'll understand, you'll see how clever Batya, the daughter of Parao was. Listen what it says. Vayigdal hayelet vatavieu lebat Parao vayihila leben vatikra shemo Moshe vatomer ki min amayim mishitiu. The boy grew up, and she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was a son to her. She called his name Moshe, as she said, for I drew him from the water. Okay. To explain the verse, so to do some ideas what's happening, here we're talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, that Moshe Rabbeinu grown, and his mother, Yochevet, that used to nurse him, brought him back to the house of Pharaoh. Because we know that Moshe Rabbeinu brought, and brought up in the house of Pharaoh. She brought it back to Batya. By the way, Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh, integrated Eden alive with her body. 
But yeah, the daughter of Paro never died. She's still alive with a full body and Ganeidim. Okay. She brought him back and the Torah tell us that Batia call him Moshe. The name Moshe, she named him Moshe. In a Gemara, there is a bit of, if she named them or HaKadosh Baruch Hu given her the Ruach HaKodesh, but it's not for now. That's not the show. It say, why did I call him Moshe? Kimin HaMayim Meshitiyo. Kimin HaMayim Meshitiyo. Whoa, 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 wait one second. You say from the water you pull them? It's not true. The Gaon Hida, Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai, he born in Jerusalem. He born around 297. He say, if we look precisely, we'll see how smart Batia, the daughter of Paro, was. What did she say here? That she drew Moshe from the water. Why are you saying it? The, everyone asked. He said that Batia was a very smart woman. But Nea knew if she will say that she drew Moshe from the little ark that he was, going to be a problem. What will be the problem? She knew that the father made a decree on every boy that born, you must throw him to the now. He said, aha. You draw him from the little ark. He'd never been thrown to the Nile. Then you must throw him to the Nile. He must drown. But when she said to him, I draw him from the water, that means that that baby already been thrown to the water. But somehow by miracle he survived it. Paro couldn't make a decree to throw him again to the water. Do you understand the smartness of Batia? Why? Because the international law, the inter internationally, there is a law that says like this. If a person being sentenced to a death by hanging, for example, and the rope, they took him and they hang him, the rope got cut, he go free. So, but all, Paro in that time also had that. What happened? But he knew that if she said to her father, I'm pulled him from the water, that means that that child, that baby, been thrown already to the now. By somehow, by miracle, he survived it. And I managed to take him out of the water. He doesn't have to be thrown again to the water. Now we understand the smartness of but of but yeah. And that's what he said, ki minamai mishitiu. What it mean minamai mishitiu? But yeah knew that if she's going to tell her father that she find them in a little ark floating in the Nile, the command will be to throw him to, back to the Nile. That, to save his life, what did she say? Kimina mai mishitiu. I drove him out where? From the water. That means he'd been thrown already to the water. And he survived. Therefore, you can't punish him to throw him again to the water. Let's move in chapter 2 to verse 23. And in verse 23, the Torah tells us something very interesting. And look what it says. In verse, uh, sorry, where is it? 23. Yes, verse 23. Here I am. melech mitzrayim. ויאנחו בני ישראל מן העבודה, ויזעקו ותעל שבעתם אל האלוהים מן העבודה. During those many days it happened that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel groaned because of the work, and they cried out. The outcry because of the work went up to Hashem. Here we see something very interesting. The Torah tells us that when the king of <laughs> Egypt when the king of Egypt died, that's Paro. Okay, when he died, Akadosh Baruch Hu accepted the prayer of Bene Israel. And many of the Mepharshim say, oh, Vachabiki, Vachabiki. What? Until now, Bene Israel didn't daven? Until now, all of those praise and davening and asking Akadosh Baruch Hu to have mercy and compassion on them didn't been accepted in heaven. What's happening here? So when I saw it, 
saw it in a Zohar. The Zohar HaKadosh on our parasha in page 19, folio 1. Remember, Parashat Shmot, Zohar Parashat Shmot, uh, page 19, folio 1. Listen what the Zohar said. That, by the way, the question of the Zohar also. He said, as long that the, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, was alive, okay, he had an angel. And that angel, because all the sin that Bnei Israel used to do, okay, he criticized that angel of Pharaoh was criticizing up in heaven, okay, against the Jewish people. That means he have a lot of accusation against the Jewish people, against Bnei Israel. I say uh, Jewish people, but that's me and Bnei Israel in that time. And the tefillah, that means the praise that they was davening, couldn't penetrate through his criticizing. But at the moment that Pharaoh died, that angel got disappeared, got canceled. Immediately they davening gone straight up to heaven. And Akadosh Baruch Hu received the davening and accepted the davening, okay? And we know that he uh, listened to their request, accepted, and then he sent Moshe Rabbeinu. But what, what does it mean? What does it mean? What are we really learning? And I was speaking to a good friends today and yesterday also about it. We spoke <laughs> about Dafka this. We have to understand that sometimes many of us dive into Akadosh Baruch Hu. We know that sometimes people have chores, sometimes people have problem, and they're davening to Akadosh Baruch Hu. And they see that they're davening and davening and davening, and somehow they don't see the light in the end of the tunnel. They don't see the light. They don't see the end. They think that Akadosh Baruch Hu don't listen to them. It's not true. Every pray every prey is like a hammer and a chisel on the wall. Every prey that you do, it will peel part of the wall. That means you have a wall, it's first plastered. So every prey help to manage, to conquer, to break that wall, to make a hole in that wall that it will reach up to heaven. That means because people do a lot of averot, a lot of sin, the preys cannot go through that wall of Averot, if you understand. Every prey that you do, you peeling a little bit until the last prey come and you make a hole. And that's what happened with Pharaoh. Pharaoh have an angel because every human being have an angel, especially the kings. That kings, why did he came and done chores to Bnei Israel? Because they sinned. And his job was to criticize. He was a lot of, he had a lot of accusation against the Jewish people. But when the time was right, when the time was right, Pharaoh suddenly disappeared, died. With him disappear and cancel his angel. And suddenly the davening go up. It's come to teach us, Rabota, that even if we in trouble, even if Lo'alenu people have chores, even if people have problem, not to stop davening, because we don't know which one of those prey will make the hole inside the wall, okay, and penetrate that filah can go up to heaven, and then Akadosh Baruch Hu will listen to our request and grant it. That's the message behind here. The Zohar come to teach us a very important message. Never stop praying. Never stop davening. Never stop asking Akadosh Baruch. That's the message here. Now we can understand what's hiding behind it. What does it mean in the Pasuk that the same day that the king died, that's referring obviously to Paro Arasha, on the same day, the prey gone up to heaven and been accepted. And Akadosh Baruch Hu listen. To teach us, never give up from praying to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That's the message here in Pshat of the Dvarim. Let's move on to chapter 3 in verse 2. In chapter 3, verse 2, it's a very interesting. Look what it says. <laughs> 
והנה הסנה בוער באש, והסנה אינו אוכל. ‫האנג'ל אוף השם אפייר שהם ‫אין הבלייז או פייר, ‫פרם אמיד דה בוש. ‫הוא ראה ואין בהל, ‫דה בוש היה בורנינג אין דה פייר, ‫אבל דה בוש היה לא קונסיומד. ‫אנחנו דיברנו על למה דה בוש ‫לא קונסיומד בפרקים שעורים, ‫אבל היום אני רוצה לדבר ‫על מה שקורה עם הסנה. ‫למה הקדוש ברוך הוא ‫הצליח להביא את משה רבנו ‫דווקא בגלל שהוא הצליח להביא את משה רבנו ‫דווקא בגלל שהוא הצליח להביא את משה רבנו ‫דווקא בגלל שהוא And the burning bush, or the tawny bush. Hazal says, Sne, it's not only burning bush, it's also the tawny bush. And basically in this verse, just to do the introduction, we see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu revealed himself to Moshe Rabbeinu and a burning bush. And Hazal, in a Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, in page 67, folio 1, asks, Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu decide to reveal to Moshe in a burning bush? What's so great about it, the Dafka, the Sneh, burning bush? So Hazal explained like this. Hazal explained, you know why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveal to Moshe Rabbeinu Dafka, Dafka, in a burning bush? Because the bush is a low... It's not like fruit tree that is very tall, bring fruit and ba 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 ba. You know, arrogancy, proud, you know. The burning bush come to teach us humility and modesty. That's mean, Akadosh Baruch Hu reveal himself to Moshe Rabbeinu. That's mean that if you want to get inspiration of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how can you get it? Only with humility and modesty. When a person is modest, when a person is have humbleness and humility, then he can get the inspiration of Hashem. That's the Gemara, Masechet Shabbat, 67, folio 1. But I saw a different commentary, and I'm going to bring another two different commentary. The Midrash Tanhuma. Midrash Tanhuma, I explained it before, been written by Rabbi Tanhuma that was a sage. And he explained, if you look at the burning bush, you'll see that the matter of fact, the burning bush, it's tawny, it's full, it's very, very squash, very narrow. He said, it's come to tell you something very important. It's come to tell you and to teach you That's a very important message there is here, Hazal said, in the middle. He said like this, he said that Bnei Israel have to understand, even when they're in Chorus, even they go in a very narrow line, very difficult situation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu with them, said the Midrash Tanhuma. He said that the burning bush come to tell you that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will never leave Israel. And no matter what situation they are, he always with them. He said, you know where you learned it? You learned it from Sefer Tehilim. In the book of Tehilim, in chapter 91, verse 15, what, it's, what is it said there? I'll translate it to English. I am together with him in a time of trouble. HaKadosh Baruch Hu say, I will be all the time, even in a time of trouble with Bnei Israel. So the burning bush, the Midrash Tanhuma come to teach us that even if Bnei Israel, in a time of dire straits, in a time of trouble, HaKadosh Baruch Hu with us, he never leave us. That's another idea. I saw another beautiful idea that I would like to share with you. That, that commentary I saw from Rabbi Avraham Saba. Rabbi Avraham Saba, funny enough, born in the city of Castilia. I'll give you a bit of history about him. He born five, around 581 years ago in Spain in the city of Castilia. He born, the, he, he born in, 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 uh, in, in Spain, but during the Spanish Inquisition, he has to flee. During his flood, they, they, they kidnapped his kids and they took him to the monastery. He, they murdered his wife. Uh, it's a long story. Anyway, long story, he arrived in Egypt and then he arrived in Eretz Israel. And you know who was his Mehutan, funny enough? 
רבי יצחק קארו, רבי יצחק קארו דתרות דשולחן ערוך. Do you understand what I'm talking about? His mehutan was Rabbi Yosef Kar. His daughter and Marana Bet Yosef, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yosef Kar's son, got married together. That means that Rabbi Abraham Saba and Marana Bet Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Kar, that wrote the Shulchan Aruch, was mehutan. And in his book, he bring the Midrash. He bring the Midrash in Shemot Rabbah in chapter nine, in ch sorry, chapter one, verse nine. And there he said like this. He said, you know why HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides to reveal himself to Moshe Rabbeinu in a turning bush? It's to send us a message. There's a message on us. He said, when you put your hand through the thorny bush, you don't feel immediately what's happened to your hand. It said that when you try to pull your hand out of the thorny bush, that's when you get scratched, when you get start bleeding, and the Torah start. He said that's a message to Moshe Rabbeinu and to Bnei Israel. He said this is a message, a beautiful message, that whoever, whoever harm Bnei Israel, the Jewish people, HaKadosh Baruch Hu promise you that you will never come out of it alive. You'll have a lot of problem. And we saw it with Paro. Paro harmed Bnei Israel, he died. The Egyptian harmed the Jewish people, they harmed, they got suffered. We see ten plagues, the splitting of the sea, Hitler, Yamach, Shem, all of those people that harmed the Jewish people, in the end, HaKadosh Baruch Hu finish the deal with them the same, like you're putting your hand lo alenu, inside the thorny bush. So that means that the thorny bush come to tell us that even if you and I are straight, those people that harming you, Akadosh Baruch Hu will deal with them. Akadosh Baruch Hu say, I'll deal with them. That's that they're harming you. They think that they're going to cause you problem. They're going to put the crease on you. I'll finish with them. When they try to come out, they're not going to come alive. And that's the message, why is the Tony Bush? Let's move with your permission to chapter four. In chapter four, verse 10, I would like to, to understand, uh, to try to explain and to understand together with you what's happening there. Remember chapter four, verse 10. And here we see that Moshe Rabbeinu speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's see what it says. Be Adonai. Lo ish devarim anochi, gam mitmol, gam mishilshom, gam meaz, dabarcha el avdecha, ki kved peh u kved lashon anochi. That's mean, oh sorry, Mark, will you read to us in English? Moshe replied to Hashem, Please, my Lord, I am not a man of words, not since yesterday, nor since the day before yesterday, nor since you first spoke to your servant. For I am heavy of mouth and heavy of speech. Okay, here we see that Akadosh Baruch Hu, we explain, ask Moshe Rabenu to go to redeem Bnei Israel from Egypt. And we know that Moshe Rabenu tried to get out of that mission. He didn't want to do that. Moshe Rabenu didn't want to do that. He tried to find any excuse. One of the excuses that he said, I'm not a good talker. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not a smooth operator. As a matter of fact, I'm static. Hazal said that Moshe Rabbeinu was static. And we know the story that the Midrash brought that uh, Bilaam suggests to Parao that to take a king and to take a hot cold and to give it in the front of Moshe Rabbeinu and Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to take the crown of the king, you know, the, the, when I said the king, the crown of the king, and came the angel and put the hand in, in the cold, and then Moshe Rabbeinu put it in his mouth. That's on a shot of the Dvarim why he got started. Other explanation, you know why Moshe got started uh, in a deeper meaning? That when Moshe Rabbeinu been taken to the house of Pharaoh, but he at first tried to find a nurse, Egyptian nurse, to Moshe Rabbeinu, some drop of the milk 
of those Egyptian came into mouth. He, could, he didn't drink until they brought his mother, Yocheved. But the mouth that's going to speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu have halav nochri hazal say, you needed to purify it. How did you purify it? With the coal. That's heavy, but that's not for now. Leave it now. Let's go back to our pasuk. Here it says, Kikvat pe uchvat lachon anochi. Hazal ask, and that whoever asked, many of Hazal asked that question, why did Moshe Rabbeinu have to be heavy talk, a stutter? What's the secret behind it? Why did Akadosh Baruch Hu chose a man that's not a good speaker? So I saw a commentary of Deran. Deran is Rabenu Nisim, Rabenu Nisim Igorondi. He born in the city of Barcelona in Spain around 706 years ago. And uh, there is Drashot Aran. That means the lecture that he give. And there he explains something extraordinary. He said, it's Akadosh Baruch who have to choose a man that started, that started. He couldn't choose a man that is a good speaker, that he's a well, uh, he can convince people easily with his time, what we call a smooth operator. No. Akadosh Baruch Hu chose a man that it's going to be difficult for him to talk. And he said, you know why? The main reason behind it, that the people not going to say that the main reason that Bnei Israel left Egypt because Moshe Rabbeinu was a good talker. A smooth talker. No. Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted to show the entire world that the main reason that Bnei Israel been saved is because Akadosh Baruch Hu. He sent Dafka the opposite, a man that's static, a man that can't talk well. But I do so, Pharaoh listened to him in the end. Why? Said Ran, from here you learn that when Moshe Rabbeinu talk, from his mouth came the sound of the Holy Spirit. And that what done the job. That means that the world will understand that everything is a hand of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Nothing is in the hand of a human being. And not people has shalom to come to a conclusion, has shalom that maybe Moshe Rabbeinu was a good speaker, a good person that can convince and etc that because of that, Pharaoh let the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim. Has shalom to do that. He said, Dafka Kadosh Baruch Hu chose a man that was not a good speaker. And now we can understand why the leader, the rabbi of the Jewish people, Moshe Rabbeinu, our rabbi, our king, the person that redeemed us from Egypt was Tata. Say, that's the run, Rabenu Nisim. Let's finish with something good, with something very, very nice. In verse 20, let's see what it says in verse 20. And with that, I would like to conclude. Here, the Torah tell us something very interesting. And on the pshat of the Dvarim, it looks very simple. But it's not simple. Look what it says. Vayikah Moshe et ishto ve'et banav, vayarkivem ala hamor, וישוב ארצה מצרים ויקח משה את מתי האלוהים בידו. Moses took his wife and son, mounted them on the donkey, and returned to the land of Egypt. And Moshe took the staff of Hashem in his hand. Okay, Rabotai, we can understand that Moshe Rabbeinu took his wife and his kids to Egypt. Okay, that we understand. We can understand Moshe took the stick because with a stick, he made a miracle. But what we can't understand, why is the Torah tell us something here? Vayarkivem al hamor. That means that Moshe, when he took his wife and his kids, they ride on a donkey. <laughs> what difference does it make to me, or to Haim Yankol, or to Haim Shmero, or to every other Jew, if Tzipora, the wife of Moshe, and his, child, and his children, Gershon and Elazar, ride on a donkey. Whoa. What difference does it make to me that the Torah put it there? If the Torah puts it there, there is something. 
Not for nothing, the Torah put it. That's the question of many, many, many of the Mepharshim. What's happening here? Why the Torah tell us that Moshe put his wife and his children and they ride the donkey to go to Eretz Mitzrayim? Why is it so important to understand? Understand that they're going with him to Egypt, that Moshe took the stick because with that he'd make the miracle. But the donkey. So to understand that, I saw in a book that called Sipuret Sadiqim. He said, first of all, take the word hamor. What it mean hamor? Hamor in English is donkey. But in Hebrew, hamor mean homer. What it mean homer? Physicality. That means that here the Torah come to tell us, say the tzaddikim. Our sages explain that Moshe Rabbeinu taught his wife any skits the Torah in such a level that he brought them to such a higher level that they control all the desire and the physicality, the homer. That means that Moshe Rabbeinu brought his family to such a higher level that they can resist the evil inclination. That that's the homer, that's the hamor. And that's what the Torah come to tell us, that Moshe Rabbeinu was such a great man that he managed to uplift his family, that means his wife and two kids, to such a higher level that the physicality, everything that physical in life didn't mean nothing to them, that they can overcome it. That means they can ride on it. That means that the evil inclination cannot do anything to them. And that's what it means. What it means that they, he made them ride on a donkey, that he made them control the evil inclination. And Be'ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit to control the Yetzirah, to come over those desires that we have. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will see that we controlling our desire, we actually conquering the Yetzirah of us, and send us Mashiach Titkenu speedily in our day, Amen, Ken Yeratzon, and build the third Bet Amikdash while we see it in our eyes. Amen, Ken Yeratzon. I would like to give time for question. If anyone would like to ask question on the Parsha, I will definitely try and answer if I can. I'm not sure, but I'll try. Rav, I just want to thank you for a Oh, Shalom Aleichem, Doctor. How are you? Thank you so much, Rav. Amazing to It's so nice to see you. Give us news about Eretz Israel. I just want to mm -hmm. just leave you guys with something very positive. Israel is now the vex, um, being known as the vaccination nation. Mm -hmm. We've sure. got the highest amount of um, vex, you know, people that have been vaccinated in the world. Sure. And wow. um, it's amazing. They've been, um, you know, the, the next is the UAE, Bahrain, and United States. And all these countries are interested in, in advancing peace and looking at their populations. So it's oh, just, okay. it's unbelievable that we are- sure, the, Mina, that's right the shame that those people who should have mercy on us here in South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> um, we will but have- But you know what, you must find out, the, the, the vaccine from Moderna, Moderna is coming to, it just arrived in Israel, it's another one. Now the chief medical officer is Dr. Tal Zex, who's Israeli. It's incredible. <laughs> He's the chief officer of Moderna. It's a very good vaccine. You don't need very uh, cold uh, temperature. It can be much, it doesn't have to be minus 70 degrees Celsius. It can be uh, cold, and then it can be also in room temperature. So they're going to be taking these vaccines to older people that can't leave their home. Israel thinks of everything. Those that are in retirement homes or in own homes that can't go to clinics, so they're going to be bringing the vaccine to them. Look how Israel thinks about its own people. It's unbelievable. If that's not has their shame, if not the mercy and the compassion of Akadosh Baruch Hu, what else? This is a miracle by himself. You can see it in your eyes. Sure. You just have to you open do. your eyes and see. And you know, the mercy and the compassion the, uh... that Akadosh Baruch Hu have on his children. That's what we spoke in Apal Shahir. You see, one thing linked to another is Shadkoa. Thank you. Beautiful, Rob. beautiful. It's such a good news to hear. Please, God. Mm. Rabota, any question mm. about the Pasha? Yes, Rabota says, uh, uh, Parun Yosef. 
Це е да паро од на јојсе дири најмо и дири вони најмо. А стивиње паро од вони на јојсе ме. Нина Нина Чезе, Фера Нина Чезе. Дири вони на Фера дина јојсе фе. Се паро од на јојсе фе. А дири најмо и дири вони на. What you say, Vayakom Melech Hadash al Mitzrayim, Asher lo yada et Yosef. That's what you're referring to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there is different, there is different commentary there. I'll bring one or two. One of them that he really did not know him. He died on Pshat of the Dvarim. Other explain, no, he knew him. He knew Paro. He knew Yosef, but he didn't want to know Yosef. What it means? He didn't want to know Yosef. That he didn't want to remember. Sorry, all the good things that Yosef done to Eretz Mitzrayim. He didn't want to remember it. You understand? This different opinion, two different opinion. This the pshat and this the drash. What I brought you, I brought you the pshat and the drash. There is thing behind it. This is on a higher level, but that's on pshat and drash. You follow, Stevie? Yes, yes. Thanks yes, for yes. the question. Do people want yes, to ask questions about Parsha? Hello? No. Okay. So, Rabotai, I know that I took uh, an hour and 15 minutes of your time. I hope that you enjoyed the Shi'ur, Be'ezrat Hashem. I would like to wish you all a good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Uh, I just want to mention one thing, if you can. Tonight and tomorrow, is the yacht side of the 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 the, the, the Rebbe that wrote the Tanya. Okay. Alter Rebbe. Try to light from him. Sorry, sorry, Stephen. Alter Rebbe. Alter Rebbe. You mean? The First about Alter Rebbe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is your side and tomorrow. And the holy books about I say when you light. a candle for a tzaddik in memory of his yacht side, you can see miracle. And we in South Africa, the numbers is climbing, number one. Uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to give you bad news. There's enough bad news in the air. But we need some mercy and compassion. And maybe by that, that we light a candle to that great tzaddik, that he'll stand in the front of a kadosh Baruch and daven, And Akadosh Baruch Hu will have mercy and compassion to stop that plague that there is in the world, especially here in South Africa, especially now that they say that this COVID is not such a simple, it's getting more and more stronger and more effective. Mm -hmm. So a so, little bit, little bit of schut that we can do, a little bit of schut, just to light a tea candle, if you have it, any other candle that you can light mm -hmm. and remember, of Rabbi Shneur Zalman Miladin. If we can do that, the ultra Rebbe, Rabotai, that please God, his merit, that we will de delegate the show to his, that he will stand in Devon to all the Jewish people in South Africa and to all the people in the world, not only in South Africa, but especially for us here, because we are in South Africa, that he will protect us from that terrible, yeah. terrible disease. Be'ezrat Hashem, he'll stand daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take that sure. plague out of the world. So that's something just to everyone to take on himself, just to do that. To wish you all have a good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, a healthy Shabbos, keep healthy, keep well. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we're all going to meet on Sunday, we'll do a Shehur on Sunday, Hope to see you all. In the meantime, have a great Shabbos. All the best. Zayn Gizun. Cool too, bro. Thank you. All the best. Shabbat Shalom.